Hello and uh, welcome to the New Forest National Park. My name's Russell Wynn of Wild New Forest uh, and today, or rather I should say tonight, uh, I'm going to be shining a light on the nocturnal world of moths. Now you might think it's a bit crazy doing a feature on moths in the middle of winter uh, and actually you'd be right, it's uh, probably the worst time of year to, to try and study moths uh, but there are nevertheless a few of the uh, hardier species on the wing at this time of year uh, and particularly tonight it's the first uh, night this year where it's going to be reasonably mild uh, and therefore worth getting the moth trap out and having a look and seeing what's about. Just to provide some context, my colleague Marcus Ward and I last year within the New Forest uh, captured or, or recorded um, 565 moth species and of those uh, over 450 were here in my uh, back garden in the east of the forest. So in a normal year you might expect to see 35-40 species of butterfly in the New Forest but there's an order of magnitude more, more moths out there potentially to see and they form a really important part of the ecosystem. It's just that because they're nocturnal uh, they're generally underappreciated and, and under-recorded. Hopefully tonight we'll show you how we use a moth trap and, uh, and see if there's anything on the wing uh, at this early stage of the year. So let's go and have a look at the moth trap. So this is the moth trap that we're going to be using. Uh, at its most basic it's a, a bright light uh, and a box to catch the moths in um, but it's a little bit more refined than that and this is one of the more uh, sort of deluxe moth traps that you can buy. Uh, it's called a Robinson trap uh, and this is a 125 watt mercury vapour bulb which puts out a huge uh, amount of light and is really good at attracting moths in. When the moths come into the trap they enter via this uh, funnel uh, and then they're uh, encased in here, uh, trapped inside here and we put in a load of cardboard egg crates that gives the moths somewhere safe and secure uh, to tuck in until we're ready to go back and, and check the trap in the morning. Um, this trap's run off mains electricity uh, with a converter. Um, you can run them off a generator if you're working uh, away, from, uh, away from mains electricity. I've had this one about 17 years, used it pretty heavily. Uh, over that time it's still going strong so it's nice and uh, durable. You can build your own uh, moth trap and there are cheaper versions uh, available to buy um, but this one's generally deemed to be the, uh, the best when it comes to attracting the widest range of species and giving you the best chance of catching anything that might be uh, out and about on a given night. So it's now about 9.30pm and uh, I've just ventured out into the garden to have a look and just heard a tawny owl calling in the distance which was, was really nice and I've already seen a couple of moths flying around the trap uh, so that's an encouraging sign so hopefully we'll have something to look at in the uh, in the morning um, this shot's really just showing you how, how bright the trap is you can see it's really lighting up the whole lower part of the garden um, luckily here we got pretty good screening from the neighbours so no issues there but obviously that bright light is very attractive to any moths that are on the wing uh, tonight in terms of the weather about eight degrees, cloudy, a little bit of breeze, so um, it's a good conditions, and hopefully we might see other some other wildlife while we uh, have a little tour around the rest of the garden. So something you might not expect to see in your garden in uh, the middle of winter is a caterpillar, but uh, you should be able to see here about an inch long beyond the tip of my index finger is a caterpillar just resting on the grass here. This is the larvae of the square spot rustic moth, uh, I think. Um, a lot of caterpillars uh, are quite cryptic and not always easy to identify but this is one of the commoner moth species and this is one of the commoner caterpillars that we see in the winter and, uh, and early spring um, periods. So, uh... so it's the uh, morning after the night before and uh, I've just gone through the, the moth trap. Uh, as expected only three or four species uh, which is, is nothing really compared to a summer's night when you might get over a hundred species and several hundred moths in, uh, in total. Nevertheless, uh, a couple of nice uh, species to show you this morning. The first one on the left is this uh, guy here called the December moth. Um, this, as the name suggests, is on the wing uh, from late November all the way through December and into the new year. Uh, a nice one of sort of furry, uh, fluffy type moths. Uh, and then this one on the right uh, is the chestnut, again as the name suggests, uh, lovely sort of chestnut brown colour. Um, this is one of the commonest moths on the wing from uh, from now right through into the uh, early spring period. So yeah, not a massive catch but nice to have a, a couple of examples to uh, show you this morning. So I've already popped the uh, December moth back in the trap and uh, there goes the chestnut. Uh, and they're nice and secure in there now, lid on and then I'll leave them somewhere in the shade uh, over the course of the day so they're nice and secure and safe in there. 
uh, and then open the lid up and let them fly away naturally at uh, at dusk. And it's worth stressing that this is a really um, good way of recording moths without having any impact on them. Uh, It's non-lethal, it has minimum uh, impact on their sort of life cycle. Um, During the summer, if I'm trapping regularly, then I'll normally try and trap only every other night um, just to give the moths that are living in and around the garden a chance to do their thing without being interrupted by the uh, the light all the time. But a really good way of recording and seeing what's there. So um, hopefully you've enjoyed uh, this little insight into moths, particularly the the moths that we get flying around in in midwinter, the hardy few, uh, and some of the methods that we use to uh, to record them. I'll probably do a few more of these over the course of the spring, especially as we get some of the larger, more charismatic species coming out uh, as we get into sort of April and, and May time. But uh, that's it for now. Hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon.